hear a lot about machine learning and artificial intelligence, and I'm delighted to be joined by Ben Barringer, Senior Equity Analyst here at Quilt Achievia, focused on telecoms, media and technology. Welcome, Ben. People confuse artificial intelligence with machine learning. Can you explain the difference? Yes, so artificial intelligence is looking at all things that humans do and trying to uh, get computers to, to, to work on those, to, to apply intelligence uh, on all, all things that humans do. Machine learning is a very is a smaller subset of that. Uh, machine learning is looking at data and, and trying to get machines to look at trends in data and, and make predictions about the world from that. What ingredient do you need for artificial intelligence? So there are two key ingredients. First of all, you need data, and then second of all, you need processing power, right? You need a supercomputer. And both of these have been enabled by cloud computing. Cloud computing essentially allows you to store data very, very cheaply. So all the data that's being created by you know, your business or by you or by the internet of things, um, that needs to be stored somewhere, and the cloud provides that. Second of all, the cloud provides very cheap supercomputers. You can rent a supercomputer on Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure. So you need, those two components are, are very much enabled by the cloud. How do you train a computer? So there are two ways to train a computer. There's supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning basically means you have to prepare the data, a human has to prepare the data in advance. This is a cat, this isn't a cat, this is a cat, this isn't a cat. You get the idea. In fact, when you're doing those uh, security checks, am I a robot, and it says, this is a sign, is this, uh, this is a sign, is this a sign, that's actually what you're doing is supervised learning for artificial intelligence. Unsupervised learning is letting the computer go out into the real world and just look at activity um, in the real world. So I'll give you an example. If you type into Google Daily Mall, and actually you delete it and say, I mean Daily Mail, and then the computer sees that, and then it sees somebody else do it, and somebody else do it, and somebody else do it. It extrapolates and says, OK, when I see somebody type Daily Mall into Google, what they mean is Daily Mail, right? That's unsupervised learning. Absolutely fascinating. In what industries is this useful? It's applicable in all industries. Basically, um, anywhere where you're looking for patterns within data. So cybersecurity is a good example, looking at ways that hackers um, are attacking industries, um, looking at the legal industry, which cases uh, win versus which cases lose, looking at uh, in the insurance industry, um, looking for car insurance fraud, trying to pick up the key patterns that mean a, um, a fraud is, is occurring. But the much more exciting scope for uh, for artificial intelligence is when you start getting computers to use that artificial intelligence to understand speech. So think about um, Amazon Alexa or Google Home, uh, getting computers to interact um, with, uh, with humans in a much more tangible way. Uh, the other area is pattern recognition, so getting computers to look at medical images uh, or getting cars to drive, uh, get, getting uh, machines to drive cars. Uh, that's going to be very, very exciting going forward. So there's a huge scope. All industries, anywhere where data is, is being produced, the computer can look and try and improve the efficiency uh, of that industry. So isn't this going to make us all redundant? I mean, what are humans going to do? So humans love to think that they're going to be replaced by computers. But actually, this is just another example of capital labour substitution. If you look back at the plough or the steam engine, people thought that they were going to repl be replaced by that. But actually, what, it, what capital and introducing you know, technology into, into our daily lives in an even more intense way, that just increases our efficiency as human beings. So I, I really don't think that uh, humans are going to be replaced. Humans are very creative, they're very good at adapting, um, and computers are very good at doing mundane and boring processes. So actually it makes our lives more efficient and less dull and dreary. In fact, I would actually argue that you know, there are going to be whole new industries created by artificial intelligence, and so it's a fascinating time for entrepreneurship and the creation of new jobs. So how can you invest in AI? So there's three ways you can really think about investing in artificial intelligence. First of all, there's the chips that do all the processing. Um, so companies like AMD, NVIDIA, and then the, the companies that make the machines that make the chips. So a company like ASML, um, real leader in this space. The second area is investing in the cloud companies that are enabling this data and this processing. So companies like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Compute Engine are all providing these services and allowing people to store their data cheaply and rent supercomputers relatively cheaply as well. The third area is companies that are benefiting from this, and this is 
these has huge applications across multiple industries. You know, the insurance industry I've mentioned, the legal industry, companies like Relex are helping those companies make decisions better. A company like Sophos in the cybersecurity area doing better uh, cybersecurity software because they've got AI looking for those, uh, those potential attacks. I hear a lot about autonomous driving. Does artificial intelligence ha have a real part to play in that? Yes, yeah, so this is all part of machine vision, right? So using cameras and LiDAR, so light uh, radar, uh, to sense the world around and give the computer a, a view of the world. Then when you take that machine vision and try and get the computer to predict what's going to happen, that's absolutely vital for autonomous driving and allowing us to have driverless cars in the future. In fact, Google um, and Tesla have already got quite a lot of data on autonomous driving, which they're using uh, to improve the service.